The Montgomery County budget increased to $7.1 billion after major increases in real estate taxes last year. And there will not be an increase in taxes because lo and behold, they have a surplus from last year. And Carrie, underneath the facade of happy days are here again, the county has some significant and troubling issues. First, the county's middle class tax base is eroding, while the percentage of low income residents is, is, is the fastest growing population in, in, of the county. So how are we going to face these challenges? We have contradictions. I mean, they, they suggest that Thrive is going to solve our, our affordable housing situation through upzoning. When, it, when upzoning across the country has, has proved, and studies have shown, whether it's the Brookings Institute or New York study um, on, on affordable housing, that by building this these multiplex housing, you're increasing the cost of the housing you know, in, in the local area. Plus in Montgomery County, and when we looked at our, our, our tax bill last year, we said that we 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 told the state, you know, hey, uh, you, you, your assessments are going up. You don't need to increase taxes. No other jurisdiction in the Washington region increased taxes. We did 4.7%. We ended up with a 15% uh, surplus. We ended up with more money to pay for more programs that were not uh, budgeted. You know, I don't know. I, I think we're just... We're just not doing a good job. Stacy, do you want to uh, have a comment on that? You know, I'd like to talk about the 800 pound gorilla in the room, and that is the number of illegal immigrants that migrate to this area and that we have to pay for services for them. And they require, because for the most part, they're low income, that it requires uh, broadening the housing base at that level. We just don't have enough land to accommodate the number of people that are moving into this area. And it has an impact um, across the board. So, I, I, you know, we, we're providing services on all different levels the children are being educated so it's costing the county more money and it's very very hard for them to predict how many people they have to absorb on an annual basis and they're not transparent about it we do not know what those numbers are um and so but they they have to educate those children those children should be educated they're entitled to an education but it's costing the county money so surplus this year guess what next year poof it could be gone well, I want to, you know, Carrie, you know, we're, we're, we're going to pivot to that and talk about affordable housing. The, the, the county is throwing $65 million to try to solve the problem. Is, is, is that the solution? Well, money always helps, uh, but we have to have other factors. Like I said, multiplex housing, you know, creates, look, when you buy a piece of property, you buy the property and you buy a bundle of rights. When you upzone the property, you're making that property more valuable, right? Uh, there's another thing called the nationally occurring affordable housing in Montgomery County. You know, when we, and that's gone down. We've lost about 11,000 uh, housing, unit, affordable housing units since 2005 um, with, with rent control, with the, you know, uh, upzoning, yeah, uh, we're going to be in real tr trouble when it comes to creating affordable housing and retaining it. Not to not to forget that the Council of Governments has uh, guesstimated that 200,000 people are going to be coming to Montgomery County in, in, in by to, to in 20 by 2030, and 75 uh, percent of those people are going to be in need of affordable housing. Now, how do we do that? I mean. We certainly can't do it by by uh, by by promoting, you know, the redevelopment of naturally occurring affordable housing into more expensive multiplex housing. Where are these people going to live? They certainly they're not going to be able to live in Montgomery County. I, I well, think we, we've got we've got a, we've got some very serious issues because because we're 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 also seeing a moving out of the middle class or Absolutely. squeezing out of the middle class. In Montgomery County, but I want to talk about another challenge facing the facing the county, and that's Stacy. You touched on that a minute ago. Is public safety? I mean, in the last week, we've seen uh, a number of articles about the uh, lack of police officers being uh, retained and the inability of, of the county to replace them. What what's happening with our in our public safety sector? You know, these are risks that are knowable in advance and discoverable along the way. 
that you reduce the police force and what happens? You get an uptick in crime. You get an uptick in crime and now you need to hire more police, but they're burned out by Montgomery County policy and politicians. They don't want to work here. If they want to stay in the field, they're migrating to other jurisdictions where they're treated with more respect and they get better pay. And so it's no surprise that we have this growing problem here. And again, I'm going to tap into that issue of the illegal immigration because we have a huge uptick in the number of gangs and the gang activity that's going on in Montgomery County. It is a pervasive and a persistent problem. I don't know any solution other than throwing more money at it to try to get more police officers on staff. Uh, all right, I'll give you the last word on this, Carrie. Well, I, I've said it numerous times. In Montgomery County, our goal is to have one police officer for every thousand residents of the county. In other jurisdictions across the country, our size, it's 2.4 to 2.8 police per thousand residents. And uh, that depends on whether it's urban or suburban. In the District of Columbia, which is a third our size, it, with 650,000 people to our million, they have 3,500 police. And to, to, and to, to uh, offset this, we have lost 14% of our police force in the past couple of years because of attrition and more to go. Th these gimmicks, $20,000 signing bonuses, you know what, the District of Columbia is given $25,000 signing bonuses. Stacy's right. The fact of the matter is, we are we are showing disrespect to our police. We are blaming our elected officials are blaming the police for everything under the sun when they are the culpable party at the in this this in this this issue. Well, it, it's, certain, it's certainly a pervasive problem and one that we're going to have to live with. And I and I agree with both of you that just throwing additional money as a signing bonus doesn't do anything with retention. And that's and those are the working conditions that the police are operating under. And, and the council has to address that.